to go and show up to the board meetings. You have to show up to PTA meetings. You have to write letters. You have to engage. You have to tell them what you want. It's as simple as that. Because unless you tell people exactly what you want, they will do what they think they can get away with. And so that is the conversation that I've been having. We have to make sure that our kids get what they need. We have to make sure that they are not disproportionately disciplined. I have two boys and two girls, and whether they're in public school or private school, I still see the same thing. The hammer comes down harder on my two little black boys. And I think that's intentional. So I'll leave it at that for one minute responses. One minute. I know, I know, I heard, I heard. <laughs> Yeah, it was a television report. I used to be able to do one minute like that. I can't now. Um, show up. You just, you, you, you have to show up. You have to go in. And not just when there's an official event going on or when somebody has said, we need for you to show up for something. You have to show up at the school board meeting, at the PTA meeting, at the parents' night. At, the, uh, at everything that you possibly can at the school and say just exactly what Janelle said. What do you want? Tell, the, tell folks what you want, what you expect. Now, I've had to deal with the fact that 10-year-old uh, boys, black boys, are targeted. And why are they targeted? <clears throat> because they're suddenly the same height as their teachers. <laughs> And so suddenly they start to get, be, be, uh, the teachers be start to become afraid of them. And that creates also, they, they discipline them much more because of that. So you have to show up and say, that's not okay. Why are you so hard on this one kid? Well, they need to be, they need to get the discipline. Well, no, they need to get support. And often it's just because they're walking down the, the, the hall with a strut that they've seen for their older, their, older, their older siblings have had, and that scares folks. Show up. That's the main thing. I just want to remind people that there are actually six school districts in Portland, and we do a disservice to kids in Park Rose and David Douglas and Centennial and the other school districts, but we don't talk about all our kids because in reality, those school districts are the most diverse school districts in the state of Oregon. And so we end up advocating for kids in Portland Public School as if we haven't pushed all the kids out to Park Rose and Centennial and uh, Red Oaks and all. And right, right. So I just wanted to remind people that Portland is large. Yeah. Yeah. I might add again with the Oregon Buddhist yeah. Digest, uh, I've interviewed a number of the school board members. And if you want to get some background in terms of what's going on at PCC, you can, you can actually go to my site. You can Google me, Oregon Voters Digest, and you'll see people within that area like Steve Buell and things of that nature, and really get down to the meat of the matter. So for those who are out of town and whatever, you can do that also. Okay? Thank you. Okay, let's move on to another question. And uh, if anyone would like to answer this question, just please let me know and I'll direct the microphone to you. How important is public education funding for formula to Mr. Benny Williams, if you want to help me clarify that. How important is public education funding? So, you know, the question is to the panel is, you know, public education, in fact, I think we're all collectively of the opinion that education is critical for our young people to... You want to come a little closer and speak on the mic here? I don't think it'll quite get all that far. Hi, I'm Benny Williams. What I was saying with, with the question here is, uh, the way it reads, and I, I know my writing is something else, how important to you is the public education funding formula? And, and basically what I was alluding to here is, you know, notwithstanding a special grant that's out there, but, you know, we know in the public school system and the three largest school districts, uh, Portland, Salem, Kaiser, and then down to Eugene, we understand that, that disciplining as well as other uh, steps of educating our students continue to be 
somewhat different for the minority students than the majority students. And yet the funding, the amount of money that comes to the schools uh, through the state uh, is, is designed to educate all of our students. And I think there's still a disparity as to how that process is working in actually being Thank addressed you. to our students. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for the, uh, the question. Uh, public education is very important. Uh, my vision is to make sure that we have all funding of pre-K through college for every Oregon student. That means that the, left, the ground will be leveled, hopefully. But we know that the disparities and stuff that exist through a lot of means and stuff is not, uh, is not taking care of that. Uh, our first thing I would do is that I would look at school superintendents because they have to be held accountable. If they're not fighting for their piece of the pie, then it means that they're not doing their job. So that's number one. Number two is that the legislation <coughs> needs to know what's broken so that we can try to fix it. And I am already, uh, uh, and we're already into 100% on fixing this. Again, public education is very important in making sure that we don't uh, provide money from our taxpayer system that's paying for public education, that's going to pay for our private education and other things, sources that's going to take away. So there are a whole host of other things that are involved with that, just to include how to, uh, students are moved out from one school district to another, and those dollars follow them over to those other school districts. So it's a big deal. Uh, it's a lot of it's very complex, but the main thing is that we got to make sure that we hold our school superintendents and our boards uh, accountable. <coughs> I'm not trying to take over the mic, whatever, but I interview these folks every day. But in the Portland public school system, when the majority, I know the majority who kids are black, there's no vote here. I'm a product of vote here, vote okay, education. It was almost kind of a basis, if you will, to be motivated to understand the A's and D's and the math of this thing. They do not have vote here in Portland public schools. Oh, we don't have it. They do now. When, when, when are they going to do it? They, they do now. They, they've been putting, that, that's exactly what's going to take place. As it went. With the money. Oh. Now. No, I mean, is it in the school? It's in the school. It's in the high school. It's not in the middle school. Huh? Now. I'll interview you on now. Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No problem. So, Hello. As Unfortunately, I could probably go on for about two hours on just this issue. schools has only picked up a little bit of that, nothing nothing like it should have been, and, it, and, and they began to dismantle the this, uh, CTE program because we had parents. And I've got to say this, we had black parents who were saying they didn't want to have their kids become um, uh, automatons, that they were, that they, they wanted, their, all they wanted their kids to do was become professionals, um, uh, scientists, um, lawyers, doctors, that's what I was told by a group of black parents at Jefferson High School back in 1998. So that we, we had an image that we were not going to have folks who were going to do, um, who were going to have shops. So they closed down the shops across the state, across the city, except for Benson High School and Vocational Village. And they started to try to close down Benson High School, too, so that you know. And that was stopped, but it, took, it was barely stopped. So we have had a real, real problem. Go to the funding really quickly. The funding issue is something that we've got to continue to look at, but we have not provided the resources for the schools in Oregon since about 1993, 93, 94. We had the ballot measure five take place, it started to gut the school, gut the funding for schools in Oregon. That has continued. We're still trying to dig out from that. We, have, we haven't dug out from that. We started cutting programs, not just in vocational and, and CTE, but in, but in music and art, even in science. And then 
Added to that, we decided that what we were going to do, the main thing we were going to do is to figure out how we were going to get tested and how people were going to be, that testing was the key element, that somehow measuring the kids every day was the way that you got them to understand learning. You, if, you, if, you, if you grow a tomato plant, you don't measure the plant every day. <laughs> you try to feed it. We stop feeding it. And so that's part of the problem, that we, we, we had the wrong priorities, and we continue to struggle with those priorities over the last uh, decade, and we're still trying to dig out from that. We have not dug out from that yet. Thank you so much. It looks like uh, you want to answer that question? Okay, good people, one minute. Quickly. Um, so, first of all, I think the education funding formula is important one that, that we need to understand. I'll tell you a couple of examples that really clearly that you should, each parent should figure out how it works. One is that you have to understand that if, if <laughs> state assigns one point for each student, let's say that, if you have a special ed student in your school district, you will get 0.5 additional funding. If you have an ELL student, you'll get another 0.5 funding. So, as a parent, first of all, as a parent of color and immigrant refugees, I think you have to understand that when your students have been pushed to the special ed, you better ask questions. Why? Um, the second important piece that I want to emphasize quickly is that what just said, that measure 5, 47, and 50 gutted our education system in the 90s. And that really destroyed our education system. So we have to fully fund our education system to make sure that we have a, a, a public school. Yeah. So that's number one. You know, we cannot accept that we are at the bottom of the national level in terms of their graduation rates. We absolutely do better. And the only way to do is that fully fund our education system and then parent engagement yeah. through the school district and the schools uh, to make sure that there's accountability in the district level. Thank you. question is to the folks who are running for a city commissioner. So for those candidates, what will you do if elected to promote leadership, development, of, and development of people of color? We have a couple people want to answer that question? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Couple of things that I will continue to do. I have championed and built a program for young people with uh, summer employment. We have a, a youth employment crisis. I started this program in 2011 with 25 kids and we have doubled that number ever since. And now Multnomah County is investing $2.1 million. We pay for 650 kids with summer jobs every year. And that didn't happen by osmosis. We had to fight and fight to get that every single year. There was no summer job program for kids between the ages of 16 and 24 until I got to Multnomah County. And District 2 in my office, we led the way. We wanted to make sure that we built the next generation of kids who wanted to go into public service. Within the next five years, almost anywhere between 35% 40% of the people at Multnomah County will be eligible for retirement. That doesn't mean that they're gonna retire. So this is how I thought that we could fill that gap because baby boomers are retiring 10,000 every single day. And with the baby boomers retiring, we're gonna to have to figure out that we go to non-traditional places to get folks who don't ordinarily go into public service. And six years later, we're here, and now we have folks who have graduated from high school and college who now work at Montgomery County. So I wanna continue more of that. I wanna make sure that we're building a bench of entrepreneurs like the inclusive fund that we started a couple of years ago. There are a number of things that I want to do to make sure that we have young people of color in uh, public service and to continue the work that we've done at Multnomah County. Really sorry to make this announcement, but if you parked your vehicle in the lot behind the bank, 
they are towing cars. Oh and so I, when I heard it, I almost felt ballistic. So please go out. I do think that there was a problem with the night. Excuse me. Uh, but please, if your car was parked in the lot behind the bank, please go out and see about it. I am really sorry. Sorry. <laughs> How you doing? All right, how you doing? If y'all parked behind the bank, they towed my car already. They towed your car already? They towed my car. You know, where, you know who towed it? There's a Retriever lot behind the senior center. Call Retriever, find out where it's at. If you need a ride, I'll give you a ride. Yeah, it's directly behind on 41st. Back. 